Okay, this is the part two, or rather a little more supplement continuing from my video on pivot table. As you, some of you may have realized, especially those doing biology or um, medical sciences, you realize that pivot table, let me just go back to a pivot table we did last time, this is somewhat very similar to what you can do when you want to calculate odds ratio and relative risk. Relative risk is also known as risk ratio. So let us say that we want to see, does BMI calculated from height and weight, so let's have BMI, does BMI actually relates to, uh, relates to diabetes, to so diabetic, okay? So you want to see this too. That means if a person has high BMI, does it mean that, does that put the person at risk of diabetes? We can actually do that because all our data is here. So how do we calculate BMI? It's essentially your weight divided by the square of your height. Okay, so this is BMI. You just pull it down. And rather than have so many um, decimal place, we don't really need them. So let's reduce it. Okay, let's do two decimal place to do. So diabetes. Diabetes is calculated when a person is deemed to be diabetic when the glycosylated hemoglobin reading rises above seven. So it's seven, if I'm not wrong, mainly moles per deciliter of blood. So in order to do that, we use a if function in Excel. If the glycosylated hemoglobin is above seven, then we say that the person has diabetes. Otherwise, we say that person has no diabetes, one or zero. Okay. That's it. Okay. So we can actually redo our pivot table looking at this. So we can just select the whole thing. Go to is a pivot table. Yep. Okay, and now. So the columns in your con in order to do your um relative risk and relative risk and odds ratio, you need to create what we know as a two by two contingency table. So a contingency table works in this way that the columns are um, disease status. That means we have diabetes or have no diabetes. The rows are the exposure status. That means high or low um, BMI. Okay. So we are still a little bit short here. Okay. So our BMI is um, calculated differently. So we can actually okay. Let me just repeat this whole thing again. We are still short of one thing. So delete this first. So we are still sure of one thing. We want to classify between high BMI and low BMI. Okay. So we say that um, okay, high BMI, or rather we use the term obese. Okay. So Obesity is defined when BMI is, let's say, above 25, for example. So this number is dependent on your ethnic group, actually. So if it's above 25, it is, you're obese. Below 25, you're not obese. So go there. And what we need to do is, we don't need so many decimal places. So let us just... We do the pivot table again. Sorry, I forgot the column. Okay, so now, what we can do is BMI is, or rather obesity itself, is the exposure. That means you're obese or you're not obese. So you're not obese, you're obese. Okay. Diabetic is the column. Okay. Then after that, we want the diabetic to go into, or rather even the obese, to go inside the values. It doesn't ma matter. Okay. We cannot have sum. We want to have 
count. So how many falls in each group? So this is where we have. Okay. So how does this read? You realize that it's actually not that easy to read because it's usually the inverse. Okay. So we can actually re-tablet the data in this way that you have, um, let me just re-tablet. So let's put this, okay. Obese, yes, no, okay. So here we have diabetic, non-diabetic. Okay. So let's transpose all the numbers over. Essentially, yes, yes is 53. So diabetic this is 53. 53 and no diabetic is 222. The other one is diabetic and is 9. 114. Okay, so here we accumulate, we have a total because this can be quite useful. So we just add up. Okay, so essentially, how does a two by, how does this, how is this able to be used? So let me just put it in this way and I'll illustrate to you how it works. So here, this is the exposure, yes or no. Okay. In this case, it's exposure. This is the condition. So we just tablet, write this as A, B, C, and D. Okay. Uh, center. I center this. Okay, so A, B, C, D. Now, essentially, your relative risk is actually equals to A divided by A plus B. Okay, the whole thing. Divide by C divide by C plus D plus D. Okay, so this is relative risk. So essentially, you can calculate the relative risk by just really this number. Divide by the total because it's not that's the two number. The whole thing divide by this. Let me just now that is relative risk, which means that yes, obesity does increase the risk of diabetes compared to no obesity because you look at the percentage okay the percentage of obese or the proportion of obese yes, proportion of diabetic in obese is much higher than the proportion of diabetic in um non-obese patients so you can just even do this so this is the proportion If you look at here, it means that 19% in our data set, 19% of obese patients are diabetic compared to only 7% of non-obese patients that are diabetic. So obesity does increase the risk. Okay. Odds ratio is another odds ratio is essentially this. Okay. It is we assume that most people are not obese. Oh, no, most, sorry, most people are not diabetic. So A is supposed to be a smaller number. So if that is the case, odds ratio will just simply take 
A divided by B. The whole thing divided by C divided by D. So that's the equation, which means that what we just need to do here is this divide by this number, the whole thing divide by this divide by that. Okay. So based on the colors, you know. Okay. So odds ratio is also high, which also means that um, obesity will has a likelihood of increasing diabetic prevalence. Okay, so that's all for today. Now you can use pivot table. The meaning is how to use how do you use pivot table to calculate um, clinical measures like relative risk and odds ratio. Now relative risk is also sometimes known as a risk ratio. Okay, all right, that's all for today.